ربي بسم الله اوكي بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ابيسود 187 سو براذر دو يو لايك مندي باي ذا واي مندي مندي I don't know what that is. You know, Yemeni, loads of rice, mendi, meat cooked under ground oven, this and that. No, no, no. I haven't had it. What? <laughs> I thought that's like, even though it's not that common in the UK, but it's kind of like a staple of the, um, how do we say it? The religious young men circles. Maybe it's like only you just when threw you... me off the men hedge, bro. You should just threw me off the men hedge. You said, "Oh, only religious people have it." So clearly, <laughs> I mean, it's a staple. Maybe it's more like a when you visit Dubai kind of thing, and you're not a Dubai kind of guy. So, yeah. Anyway, maybe no. that's what it is. Anyway, bro, it's imagine per person. It's like three kilos of rice. Okay. Yeah. And then you could get chicken meat, like lamb, chicken. But they, the way it's cooked is so good. It's so tender. It's like falling off the bone. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's very popular, I guess, because of that factor. Um, I like it now and then, but like it's everywhere in UAE. So I, you know, I grew up eating a ton of it. So I'm not, you know, I'm a bit over it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, now, yeah. And, now and then, you know, go and grab it. So I just had some now, and it kind of put me to sleep. I just had a ten minute nap. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So you well, know what you know you got to try some mendi. I mean, where I don't know where where you are, but you've got like um, some students from the Gulf over there, don't you? Yeah, but the students, bro, I don't really mix with students. Yeah, but I'm just saying because they have those that those are over there, they might have a restaurant. Yeah, maybe. there probably is a place that does it. I just haven't really explored too much, to be honest. I mean, it's worth um, trying once in a lifetime, I would say. Inshallah, when you give me that fat invite to uh, well UAE, I suppose you're in Turkey now, but. I mean, yeah, <laughs> got it over here too. Oh, there you so, go. Come through. Come Shall through. Why not? So this episode is the personality test episode, brother. We're what about to it? psychoanalyze you. You know, when I was in school, private school and all that, yeah, mm. we did we did psychometric tests. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was supposed to tell you like, I mean, I think the way they kind of framed it was like, yeah, this is going to help you choose a career or like what to study in uni. I think okay. I was year 11 at that time, like 16 years old. It yeah. was interesting. I enjoyed it. I don't remember my results at all, but that would be interesting to go all the way back then and see like see if what's... it's linked at all. Because they do say, I was listening to a, an interview with Jordan Peterson and he was saying that um, these kind of uh, traits, you know, like personality traits, they tend not to change much in your lifetime. Oh, really? So, uh, yeah. So, be interesting to see if I didn't change, like if I that test is similar to now or what. And I guess that would be the same with the, the tests that we're going to look at today because I did mine like five years ago. So, oh, really? You so didn't we, do it since? No, I didn't do another version. I just, I just thought. Oh. I mean, but it's it, the same test, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's the same test. Yeah. It's the exact same okay. one. So, yeah, we did this test. It's the um, Big Five model of personality, whatever it's called. The Big Five aspect scale, that's what they're calling it, right? And the Big Five traits, so it's like, it's, I guess it's saying like you can summarize your personality with these five traits. Number one, agreeableness, which mm. is compassion and politeness. Number two is conscientiousness, which is industriousness and orderliness. Industriousness, industriousness is like how, like work ethic. That's what I understand. They have a whole description on each one. Oh yeah, that's true. Actually, we can go into that. Industrious, diligent, and hardworking. Okay, makes sense. Extraversion is number three, which is enthusiasm and assertiveness. <laughs> I don't think I'm very um, enthusiastic, but maybe assertive. Uh, neuroticism is number four, withdrawal and volatility. Okay. I've, I know I've got a very extreme one for that, by the way. And then uh, openness to experience is number five. So that's openness and intellect. Cool. So how did you find it? You just did it this past week, didn't it? Yeah, it's so wordy though. And each, I don't know if you've seen, but like each one has like a breakdown of sub subsections as well. 
You mean the uh, questions yeah. or the results? Uh, the results. But what about so, doing the questions? How was it? Questions were okay. They were a lot. What was it? How many questions in total was it? I think it said 100. Is that possible? Oh, really? I felt like I needed more questions, to be honest. Mm. I, I didn't feel like the questions were broad enough um, to really. But that's the thing, I suppose. You can't really get a whole, um, what's the word, a holistic sort of personality thing. I'm not really a firm believer in a lot of these personality tests. I just feel like it's difficult to box anybody up into a category. Mm. However, it's uh, there were some things I agreed with and some things I didn't in terms of results. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it's difficult because it's also like I did it with my wife as well because there was a connection thing that they, they've got on this, so you can yeah, compare yeah. yourself with a partner. Yeah. So I got my wife to do it, and then we compared each other. Yeah. Um, and yeah, some things I agreed with, some things made sense. Um, but yeah, it's it's easy to take this and get a bit too deterministic with it, and be like, oh, this must be it. I must be all of these things. Yeah. Um, kind of like almost horoscopy you know how people mm. like uh yeah w what's the word i don't know self-fulfilling like, prophecy yeah, yeah. that's the yeah. word that's the term i'm thinking of yeah. yeah it's a bit like that um so you've got to just take it with a pinch of salt but if there's science behind it then um yeah I'm all, i think I'm i think i over time have become more and more convinced of the like utility of this actually you know really yeah i remember doing the myers-briggs test that's the one where the result is like INTJ or E oh, yeah. N whatever. So I remember doing that a long time ago, bro, 10 years ago or more. And it was kind of like interesting this and that. But and actually my result for that changed. I remember doing it like years after the first one. Mm. And my uh E became I, right? Which means E is for extroverted, I is for introverted. So if, in theory, apparently I, I became introverted um as I became older. Mm. Um, but yeah, that test, I find it to be quite accurate. Um, if I just go to Myers, Myers, Briggs, and then if we can just look at the, um, the four types, the four indicators, like what they mean, like the four letters. Okay. So the first one is introversion or extroversion. So I think I'm definitely introverted. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Um, because, uh, it's not that I'm not sociable. I'm just sociable with people I know well. And like with people I don't know well, I'm like not that bothered or interested. So that that's pretty clear to me, you know. It's not like I've gone about my life like um, always keeping this in mind. But I mm. do feel like I've just ended up like this. And I, I think that my test result was very uh, close to that. So that's the I, though, the, like the first letter. The mm. second one is sensing or intuition. First... So sensing versus intuition. Yeah. So I am I would definitely be more like sensing. I, I struggle to like, you know, that whole go with your gut. Yeah, 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 yeah. I struggle with that. I'm more like, what does the data say and all of that? So that would make me more sensing. Uh, I-N. So um, is it like that? The N, like I know, I think I'm INTJ. So the N means sensing. But I guess you I, would get more intuition, right? I, oh, yeah, INTJ, innovative, independent, strategic, logical, reserved, insightful, driven by their own original ideas to achieve improvements. Mm. My sister loves this one, man. She was talking to to the whole family about it. Um, like what, Myers-Briggs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was mm. uh, getting trying to get everyone to do this. I think mm. we did it, but I don't remember my results. And then... She okay. concluded that me and my wife are just not compatible based on this at all, but I don't know. That would be that would be interesting. Yeah. This one seems <laughs> this one seems more um how do you say it? More restrictive than the one the the big five that we just did. Yeah. But anyway, so those are the first two letters. The third letter is thinking or feeling. So I'm definitely thinking, obviously. And then the last one is judging slash perceiving. Judging slash perceiving. Also, oh, perceiving is like, okay, I'm just observing and seeing how things are. And then judging is like, like, okay, it's this way. Okay, do that. Mm -hmm. Like you're using your the input to like actual judge things. So yeah, I'm J, so judging. So, but you can see how like these four combinations, they would make up 16 different unique personality types. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's, it's not hard to imagine that out of all the 
eight billion people, you could, you know, obviously roughly put them into sixteen categories. That that makes sense. Like that seems possible. Possibly, yeah. I think you know maybe uh, what's the word like uh, not vague categories, but um, yeah, broad, like a little broad. Bit broad. Ca- that's the word yeah. I'm looking for. Yeah, broad categories. Yeah. Um, but anyway, and then, and then if you want to go into like. Okay, who exactly are you as a person? What shaped your experiences? Okay, that's when it goes more into just like interviewing people and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so going to the big five one. So the first in the category of agreeableness. Let me bring. What's up. your agreeableness level? Let you know what I'm gonna like guess. So I think you should before. Yeah. I know it's a bit wordy, but I think it's worth defining. Uh, is that the first paragraph written here? Oh, no, it isn't. It isn't, is it? No. Uh, well, the second no, one is basically... It tells you what you are, and then it tells you what that means. Well, the second paragraph says about agreeableness. People high in agreeableness are nice, compliant, nurturing, kind, naively trusting, and conciliatory. Okay. Yeah. However, because... Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, however, because of their tendency to avoid conflict, they often dis, uh, dissemble and hide what they think. People low in agreeableness are not so nice. They're more stubborn, uh, dominant, harsh, skeptical, uh, competitive, and in the extreme, even predatory. However, they tend to be straightforward, even blunt, so so you know where they stand. So I'm going to say, bro, that you are, I would say you're typical but you're a little bit more towards being agreeable. So out of 100, what do you think I am? Uh, so more agreeable me being higher, right? Yeah. I'll say you're 68. Okay. Uh, what about you? Uh, I don't know what you would be. Well, if you're saying 68, then you must be below that. <laughs> so I'm going to say 42. <laughs> okay. So you don't think I'm very uh disagreeable or whatever the word is. I don't know. Because you assume that I would be more agreeable than I assume that you would be less. Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> so I, it says I'm typical. Typical. What what's yeah? the score? I'm 54th percentile. Oh, nice. I am um I'm high. I'm 80. <laughs> oh. 80 very agreeable. Yeah, baby. Okay. Just tell me what to do. <laughs> that, that's good for, for marriage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't get okay. myself into too much controversy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Interesting. I, I didn't. Yeah. Okay. I thought I would be lower. Like, I thought, yeah, yeah, I'm not very agreeable, but I don't know. Interesting. This is one of those ones where I thought if I take the test again, it might come out lower, but whatever. So I'll read this quickly then. Uh, people with high levels of agreeableness are seen by others as cooperative, warm and considerate. They are quite likely to look for and even sometimes see the best in others and are interpersonally tolerant. They do not like to see other people's feelings get hurt and tend to be much concerned about the emotional state of others, preferring peace and harmony. They tend highly uh, towards submissiveness rather than dominance, particularly if also above average in neuroticism. People with high levels of agreeableness are forgiving, accepting, flexible, gentle, and patient. They feel pity for those who are excluded, punished, or defeated. They tend to insist that people work cooperatively and often believe that competition with its losers and winners is morally wrong. Oh, God. I mean, I won't mm. agree with all of that, but <laughs> I can definitely see some of it. Absolutely. Mm. But a lot of that is like, for me at least, is, is, is elements of that is borrowed from the dean. You know, it's the, so like when it comes to the being. Oh, so you're saying that I'm not on the dean, brother. Bro, you threw me off the men hedge earlier for not eating that food. All right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but but for me at least, when I think of the things that stick out to me there that I would agree with, are like any sort of disputes that we have in in the, among the family or among friends or whatever. Mm. I would much rather bite the bullet and move on, and uh, you know, I would 100 percent like if someone came to me for forgiveness or someone did something, and it worked me up. I would rather just forgive and move on. Um, because I think the, the the end goal of just reconciliation and death with no grudges is way more appealing to me than just having this grudge that doesn't actually do any favors for me whatsoever. Um, and I, dry, I yeah. always advise everyone else in my family with that. You know, when I leave my household and there's some issues, I always try and push people to just, um, you know, uh, just be the bigger person and let it slide. 
However, there is negatives to that because people do get walked all over if they continue performing like that. Um, and I don't know how to manage that. I haven't really felt like that by behaving like this. Uh. Um, but you tell me, what, what, what do you think about your um, your uh, result? Yeah, I mean, I was a little bit surprised. I thought I'd be less agreeable than that. But oh, really? I think, I think uh, what you're saying makes sense. Like, yeah, maybe the best Muslim would be one who's a little bit more agreeable. But there is a big element in Islam which you need to be a uh, you need to be less agreeable, which is standing up for justice, standing up for people's rights, that kind yeah. of stuff. So it's. It's being able to be, do both if possible, you know, but, mm -hmm. you know, um, like people like myself, um, I don't know if this is linked, but I'm very much towards like justice rather than being nice, if you know what I mean. Um, yes. Yeah. So, and I don't think, I don't, I don't know, I, I can't recall from the top of my head, but I don't know if the questions were that focused on the specifics. Because the question could be something about, you know, that refers to agreeableness, but there's a di big difference between being polite, being forgiving, um, and all this stuff, but then seeking out justice, especially on the on behalf of others, right? There's a big difference between um, agreeableness in your own regard and then for, for other people. Like if someone else, uh, someone yeah. else was, their rights were being taken, what would you do? Mm -hmm. Would you just push them and tell them, listen, uh, just let it slide, let it slide, let it slide. Or would you attempt to try and get their rights for them or whatever? Um, yeah, I think a lot of people would be more willing to go out of their comfort zone for other people's rights, right? But yeah. the fact that you're more agreeable would hold you back in both scenarios, mm. um, but just to different degrees. But some people, they this would be a fitna for them, you know, like they just can't stand up for other people even because of yeah. this. You know, they just want to avoid conflict to that level. Right. There's loads of, the, it literally, the, the one thing I was thrown off with is how long this is. And if you do the couple version, like the, the comparing two people, it's so much longer mm -hmm. because it not only does it give you the definition of high and low, but then it gives you what, what the, what one being high and one being low could mean and what both being high could mean. Oh really? You know, yeah. I like that. So it goes, it goes into a lot of depth. Yeah. Um, be, uh, so within all each of the big five, there's like two subcategories, right? Yeah. So yeah, there's two subcategories as well. So like you'll have agreeableness, and then you'll have compassion and uh, politeness for for agreeableness, and then it'll move on to yeah. Uh, well, there's loads. Anyway, I'm just gonna. I don't want to. I think we should go into the subcategories <laughs> if we have something extreme in it. But yeah. Okay. Let's mine aren't extreme for the subcategories of this. All right, so the next one we've got is compassion. Is, is that shown for you? Yeah, yeah, but this is okay. a subcategory of agreeableness. Yeah, I don't mind br briefly just saying what they are. Okay. Compassion, yeah. is quite, compassion is quite self-explanatory, really. Yeah. Um, so qu quickly, I was moderately high, 77th percentile. Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, I, I'm also moderately high, but I'm 61st percentile with compassion. That's it. This I'm is interesting, that. yeah. Those who are liberal politically score somewhat higher in compassion than conservatives. Yeah, that's such that's yeah, that's a loaded sentence. <laughs> but yeah, go on. Yeah. yeah, and then women are also higher in compassion than men. The mean percentile for women is in general in the general population is sixty one, and for yeah. men it's thirty nine. Moderately compassionate people are interested in problems of other people and other living things. Mm. They are concerned about helping other people avoid negative emotion. Mm. Like, once again, this is just, you know, this is why I assume we should be high in compassion for others. But yeah, but anyway. that's because, you you know, it's like you don't know what, how do you say it? You don't know what it's like from outside of the, the, the fish doesn't know what it's like. It, the fish doesn't know it's in a fish bowl. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's yeah, that 100%. kind of thing. So, you know, you're probably quite a compassionate guy. You're quite um, agreeable and blah blah blah. You might not realize what could go on in my head. Yeah, right? that's hundred percent true. Like, yeah, if, assuming I was quite different, you know. So, yeah. Then we have politeness. What do they mean by politeness? What's the, de the definition? So, um, so they mean uh, they mean. Uh, Polite people tend to be differential to authority. 
deferential to authority and are generally obedient. They are respectful and do not want to appear pushy. Uh, they are more uncomfortable challenging other people than average. Moderately polite people try to avoid conflict and basically desire to steer clear mm. of confrontations or fights. The problem is it's giving me a definition of what I am, which is moderately high. So oh, got it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I'm reading that. Mm. But um, here it says the liberal people are less polite. Those who are liberal politically score somewhat lower in politeness than conservatives. Why do you keep giving me this old liberal conservative thing? Jordan Peterson's all about this. Is this this is his, isn't it? This is yeah, his. Yeah, thing. it is. Yeah. Right. So that's why. That's like why people are interested in this stuff in America, isn't it? Yeah. So um, seventy six for me. What about you? Forty fifth. Oh, dude, you need to well, get, your, get your manners up, bro. <laughs> <It's all right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is different to manners, isn't it? This is it. The definitions are all subjective to what he's put. Because when someone says politeness, I'm not necessarily thinking about obedience and authority, respect yeah, and authority. But that's what this this what means. I guess it's, yeah. uh, it's a term they made to make the test. And then it says women are higher in politeness than men. So, yeah, that would make sense. That's what I say, bro. Like, many people say it's not just me. Um, like... You know, if you're going to like have a revolution, you're going to overhaul some sort of messed up system. That's why you need yeah. you need men in place because men have that thing where it's like, no, we're not agreeable, you know? Apart from um, me. <laughs> <laughs> on average, yeah. <laughs> okay, then we get to the next, the number two in the big five, which is conscientious conscientiousness. I'm going to try and bring it up on the computer because I was reading it on my phone. So I'm going to just... Here we go. Here we go. I'm back on. Uh, here we go. This is much easier to read than on my phone. So what are you? Give me the quick fire score. Okay. So I'm high, 78th percentile. Wow. I'm the opposite. I'm low, 17. What? <laughs> yeah, bro. Whoa. <laughs> you know, uh, you know uh, in conscientiousness, what I understand about it is like, it's like the ability to like focus on one thing and like pile through a task and like have that tunnel vision. And you know what I mean? Is that? What it actually means, I'm kind of forgetting. So what it says on us is, uh, oh, so I'm low in, I can't define it. I'm have to get to define what low means. So you're a low in conscientiousness, which is the primary dimension of dutiful achievement in the big five personality trait scientific model. Conscientiousness is a measure of obligation, attention to detail, hard work, persistence, cleanliness, <laughs> efficiency, and adherence to rules, standards, and processes. Yes. Conscientious people implement their plans and establish and maintain order. Yes. Yeah. I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily argue that I have a hard time doing that. You're like that hippie type, you know? You just want to, like, go with the flow kind of thing. Bro, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm trying to change that, and I'm trying to improve that, and I've definitely made a lot of progress in doing so. But people just uh, have to accept you for who you are, bro. No, 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 never. <laughs> never, 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 never. But growth, bro. I'll growth. tell you something, yeah, about conscientiousness. My son is three. Mm -hmm. From age, probably before two even, I could tell he had this high conscientiousness. Mm. Um, and it makes me think it's genetic, you know, because I have I'm high high uh, high in conscientiousness, and my dad is very high. Um, a lot of my uncles, I see it in them. My mom, my mom also is uh, in a large way as well. So it's like it seems like these can be genetic, you know. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, definitely, it's going to be borrowed from somewhere. Um, it was interesting actually because. I was listening to some psychologist uh, or, yeah, I think it was a psychologist. He was talking about how um, a lot of things in terms of kids, I wish I could get this clip up, but I'm going to butcher this. But children, um, you can you can rack your head around trying to make children or make children better or make children uh, improve in their behavior or their personality or whatever. Um, and then blame yourself when things go bad. So like, oh, my child is just really naughty or misbehaving, et cetera, or he doesn't do this for you or doesn't do that. It mm. must be my fault. It must be my fault. It must be my fault. But this psychologist was arguing that um, the way your child is, like 99% of it is actually um, inherited from not just you and your 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 wife, but also from like grandparents, great grandparents. Like it goes down, like it's it's so far down like a, the, the, the family tree that it could literally be anybody from that kind of background. Do you know what I mean? Like from their, from their ancestors or whatever. But 99% of what? Of their like personality. Okay, okay personality. So personality, um, what else? Like 
you know, the, the, the kind of stuff we're talking about now, the kind of stuff we're talking about now, I wish I could find the clip, but essentially maybe 99% was a bit too much, but yeah. essentially it was like, don't beat yourself up when you're doing everything you can. And they're just not going in the direction that you mm. think mm. they should be in terms of their personality and in terms of their behavior. Uh, yeah. It's actually that they may be more, they may be processing information in a way that is actually more in tune with another ancestor of theirs or you know their grandparent or their great parent grandparent or whatever it is yeah um, and if you think about it like i've got i was looking at my uh my brother-in-law's um her like ancestry data stuff yeah and it was fascinating to me because you know so they're they're, they're, Qabail, they're from algeria half english half algerian and um i haven't got it up right at the moment but 32 percent, which was the majority was portuguese like coming from Portugal, and then like only like fifteen or something percent was North Africa, oh. you know. What I mean? And then obviously a lot of a big chunk was from England, Scotland, etc., which makes sense because they're half English. Yeah. Um, but it just shows you like things can come from anywhere, bro. That you wouldn't even know. Uh, behaviors can come from anywhere. Like sometimes I see the way Sully Man acts, and I think I feel like I he the way I see he even behaves sometimes isn't like how I was when I was a kid, but mm. I associate his behavior more with like stories of how my dad was when he was a kid. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, and some of that is because circumstantial uh, things align as well. Like he's the oldest boy. My dad was the oldest yes. boy. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Stuff like that. So um, but what's your take? Do you think a majority of it is going to be things you teach? Or do you Bro, when, my, when, my, when I had my first son, I had it in my head that 90% of how this boy turns out is going to be from my parenting or like his environment and basically mm -hmm. nurture, not nature, right? 90%. Um, now I think it's higher than just the 10%, which is passed through kind of thing. But I don't know. I like to think that it's at least, at least 50%. But you know what? There's personality. I guess it, it's not, I'm, you know, these traits we're talking about. Yeah, I'm seeing some of them as like, this is just negative. If you if you're low in this, it's just bad. But I think Sometimes. maybe the way that the way that they um, they mean it to be is that yeah, you can like succeed in in different things uh, with any of a mixture of these traits. Mm. The thing is though, bro. For example, conscientiousness. From what I understand, this is like the number one trait to be successful financially in 2023 or in this like in our generation right yeah like yep. if you think of the highest earners whether it's in finance or engineers or uh whatever yeah business management these they've all got these kind of traits right um attention to detail hard work um they like to adhere to rules standards and processes like this is exactly mm -hmm. what you need for this kind of stuff so if you're lacking like in that this you might actually be at a disadvantage now we're not saying disadvantage in the akhirah but the way the world money making systems set up, it's like very yeah, much, you know, leaning towards this. A hundred percent, hundred percent. I've got, um, I found that clip by the way, just play it quickly. So I know what I was talking about. Uh -huh. Dr. Russell Barkley. Okay. I don't know. Let me just play the audio. Okay. Here we go. Your child is born with more than 400 psychological traits that will emerge as they mature and they have nothing to do with you. So the idea that you are going to engineer personalities and IQ and academic achievements oh, and all these other things <laughs> just isn't true. Your child is not a blank slate on which you get to write. Oh, damn. The better view is that your child is a genetic mosaic of your extended family, which means this is a unique combination of the traits that run in your family line. I like the shepherd view. You are a shepherd. You don't design the sheep. The engineering view makes you responsible for and for everything, everything that goes right and everything that goes wrong. This is why parents come to us with such guilt, more guilt than we've ever seen in prior generations, because parents today believe that it's all about them and what they do. And if they don't get it right or if their child has a disability, they've done something wrong. When in fact, the opposite is true. This has nothing to do with your particular brand of parenting. So I would rather that you stop thinking yourself as an engineer and step back and say, I am a shepherd to a unique individual. Shepherds are powerful people. They pick the pastures in which the sheep will graze and develop and grow. They determine whether they're appropriately nourished. They determine whether they're protected from harm. The environment is important, but it doesn't design the sheep. No shepherd is going to turn a sheep into a dog. Your child is... That's it. Mm. 
It's interesting though because now with that we we you know كل لكم راعين as the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said وكما قال and then you think about it that way and it's like mm, maybe because with that kind of um, analogy being yeah. a shepherd yeah. you don't control the sheep the sheep are the sheep and you have to guide them as yeah. they are yes you know you have to guide them as they are they come as they are and you guide yeah. them yeah but like I think I think the the interesting thing is the proportion that you would give to nurture versus nature and that's uh, he yeah. didn't mention that in that clip he showed but yeah yeah whatever it, it the pro, the proportion is we just have to be aware you know we're responsible etc mm. but even it's education good. wise right like you know you know you start homeschooling and all that like yep. my view right now at least is like like the guy said i'm not going to Uh, try and get my kids to go down any particular route like education wise yeah. but what i will do is is that when they show interest or aptitude in an area i will push them in that direction like mm. like i've been saying about my son like from from day one i'm like look this guy's an engineer he's got an engineer's brain yeah like mm. already <laughs> that's already mm. determined you know yeah 100%. Um, so it's quite crazy actually i like I don't know because I don't, you know, I don't have many kids <laughs> and I haven't like, mm-hmm. they're not old and stuff, but like the level to which he seems to show this high conscientiousness is quite alarming. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How yeah. He, he just likes order in so much, so many things. Yeah, and I, yeah, I feel yeah. that because I'm like that, but you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what percentile were you again on conscientiousness? 17. 17. Oh, so that's like very low, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, what's your subcategories quickly? So, industriousness, which is what's uh, industriousness? Uh, okay. do, 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 do. Well, <laughs> some of these definitions are very detrimental to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm 18th. Very well, I'm low. Okay. So, uh, what does it say about people who are low in industriousness? Because uh, I don't have who- a clean definition. Okay, people who are low in industriousness are much industriousness are much like much less likely to be successful in school and in administrative and managerial positions, particularly mm. if they are also less intelligent. If they are highly intelligent, they tend to be regarded as underachievers. They focus less on work than others and are substantively more likely to procrastinate, miss deadlines, or fail to complete assignments mm. or projects completely. Mm. They put off responsibilities, concentrate more on fun, worry, relationships, excitement, or creative endeavor. Do you know what? Just mm. to pause on that one of the questions it asked and it depends how you uh, interpret it like yeah. one of them was like do you have a lot of fun yeah something like that yeah okay and i was just like yeah i put it like it's the highest yeah. and then when my wife did it afterwards mm. i was like wait a second what did he mean by have a lot of fun like and then that's when i started thinking when i look, looked at this i started thinking oh maybe they think fun is like at the expense of you know doing stuff that you should be doing but like yeah. i don't do like i don't the fun that people might consider super fun like i don't know what would you consider fun i mean well that's the thing like that question yeah do yeah. you have fun i would definitely put like no or not really much. yeah but i know i don't do anything out of like out of a very very small uh you know i don't do much okay. but what i do do is really fun to me yeah, yeah. right and it could be something basic it could be like spending time with my family Yeah. All together or wrestling or whatever with the kids. That's a lot of fun to me. And I consider myself as having fun that way. Mm-hmm. But that but maybe he's thinking like partying and not studying and no, but I think the they take that into account when they ask it. Let me let know. me read you something, yeah. In the FAQs, in the FAQs it says, Why can I only take the test a single time? Yeah. Oh. A genuinely accurate personality test has to be taken and scored in a standardized manner. The sample of people against whom your scores will be compared only took the test a single time. We have to make the conditions under which you take the test as similar to those of your comparison group as possible. And that means yeah. only having you take it once as well. Furthermore, if you take the test and then look at your results and then retake it, then your second results will be subject to biases introduced by your now expanded knowledge of your personality. That means that you will change your responses in all likelihood and distort your answers. So I think it's the kind of thing where you're not supposed to think too deep about it. 
Yeah, it's just that's the nature of language, though, isn't it? I think you know to do a proper proper one, it needs to be in. Yeah, of course. Lots of rest, but I mean, questions. for someone so low in industriousness, you still went to uni, bro. So you're like, because I was, but yeah, but like when you the thing is, there's arguments for and against. Like if when it says, "Oh, I didn't do well at school and I'm underachieved," I think back to like when I tried to study medicine and all that stuff. Like at school, yeah, I sucked, bro. Like I was easily distracted by kids and stuff. But the thing is, I don't, I wouldn't consider myself uh, as not intelligent or underachiever. I was easily distracted, but I definitely could grasp, you know, difficult concepts and stuff. I was very good at certain things. Like when I went into social sciences, I was like getting A stars and stuff with that, mm. right? When my when my social circle shrunk and it was just really me at, at, at school or at yeah. college, mm. yeah, I was like top of the class in most classes. Mm. Um, so it was just, you know. You well, you might be, we're going we're gonna to see it later, but you might be high in intellect then. Well, let's keep going because these yeah. are quite long. So yeah. I don't want to, you know. Okay. Orderliness, quickly. Uh, moderately low, 25. Okay. 76. Moderately high. This is why we're such a good podcast pair. It's true. We're the complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, this is number three, is it? In the big five? Extroversion. Uh -huh. So, extroversion. Um, so, extroversion is the primary dimension of positive emotion in the big five personality trait scientific model. Extroversion is a measure of general sensitivity to positive emotions, such as Let's hope, go, joy, anticipation, and approach, particularly in social situations. And yes. Mohammed, your percentile is? I'm exceptionally high, 96. <laughs> oh, yeah. You get excited and stuff. Yes. Bro. I like you feel to, I, joy and hope and anticipation. Yeah. I was getting excited as you were reading it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, I would have, I probably would have guessed you. I wouldn't have guessed, was it 93? I wouldn't 96. have guessed that high, but mm, 96, maybe. wow. And almost perfect. Almost. Um, I'm oh typical God. or average, which is, and I'm 43 percentile. You know what? We spoke about this before we did this, like maybe a couple of years ago, where I said that. I was trying to understand how your brain works because I said that during these five, six years of doing the podcast, yeah. it's almost six years now or whatever, mm. um, I've been like this, bro. Like you see the episodes, bro. One minute I'm like up here, yeah. <laughs> one minute I'm down here, one minute yeah. up here, one minute down here. Bro, wow. there's been times, there's been many times where I've been so down here that I like don't even want to do the podcast. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. I just don't know how I'm going to get through. Mm -hmm. And then these past six years, bro, every time we've done an episode, you've just been like this, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you wait till you see my volatility score. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let me read quickly what uh, that means for me. Uh, I'm going to read just a small bit of it. People with ex exceptionally high levels of extroversion are ex extremely enthusiastic, uh -huh. talkative, <laughs> assertive in social situations, and gregarious. Oh, I might have to define that. Maybe my intellect isn't high enough. Gregarious. Let's go for gregarious. Uh, fond of company and sociable. Okay. Oh. They are... Un unusually energized by social contact and crave it they take exceptionally exceptional pleasure in planning parties telling jokes making people laugh and taking part in community activities they're extremely likely to have positive memories of the past high levels of current self-esteem and tremendous optimism about the future some of that yeah some of that is uh, yeah actually most of that i agree with I'm not, let me guess yeah. something go for it i feel like although you're in 96 percentile the whole um social element probably your environment has tampered that a bit do you think that's true yes but if on a sort of um if you were to take my whole life into yeah. into into that then yeah 100 yeah, percent. and that still exists because um yeah although i see people a lot less mm. when i know that people are gonna you know link up and stuff i try and be part of it as much as possible mm. Telling jokes, yeah. Do you see, the problem is my maybe my ex, my extroversion in this element is so high that my struggle is trying to not be all these things. Mm -hmm. Like I try and stop talking a lot, and I try and stop telling jokes. Like I had this issue yesterday. I was mm -hmm. in some group chat thing, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't stop, bro. Like mm -hmm. I just could. When I see an opportunity, it's mm. like a golden nugget, and I can't help but jump at the opportunity. Mm. Even though I'll tell myself, right, that's it. I'm going to stop now. I'm not going to do this anymore, mm. right? Fix yourself. Can't be a, a clown all the time. And then I just see someone will just line one up. Someone will line one up. And then you come with the alley-oop. 
bro honestly and it would just be they just walk straight into it and i can't help it i have to <laughs> but anyway um <laughs> should we carry on yes so extraversion enthusiasm what's your enthusiasm level it's the same exceptionally high 96. bro mine's eight percent <laughs> what <laughs> why are you so bored <laughs> whoa <laughs> what, are you, what are you bored about <laughs> Yeah, Is that so, why you do mind heist so I can ex excite you? <laughs> it says that individuals who are very low in enthusiasm are quiet and unexcitable. They can be very hard to get to know. Oh, they can be very hard to get to know as they are not at all chatty or bubbly. When they do talk, and they do so comparatively rarely, it tends to be about things in which they find exceptional interest. They open up to other people with difficulty, particularly in larger social gatherings or parties. Wow, this is quite accurate. They laugh very much less frequently than others. They typically prefer solitude and find it difficult to enjoy themselves around other people. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Complete, complete opposite of me. Yes. Like, I'm cool with close friends, but other than that, I'm just like a bit. So the it's women are cool. higher in the enthusiasm than men. I keep getting all these feminine traits yeah, going bro. on with me. Well, Individuals who are exceptionally high in enthusiasm are extremely excitable, happy, and easy to get to know. They will talk remarkably rapidly about everything, particularly other people. They laugh or giggle to a remarkable degree. <laughs> <laughs> they absolutely must be around people continually, and they love parties. He keeps talking about parties, bro. Mm. Um, they cannot keep people at a distance and keep nothing private. They are unusually positive and optimistic. They warm up remarkably quickly to other people. They love and crave simulation, excitement, activity, and fun. They're always telling jokes and trying to make people laugh. But anyway, look, yeah, I'm at one extreme. You're at another extreme. I don't think uh, the listeners would be too, uh, they wouldn't be in too much disagreement. Surprise. You, know, yeah. I, what, you know what you're de describing? I think I was like that in school, you know. Oh. But I must have been faking it. <laughs> yeah, trying And to now the real me came out. Maybe. I've Maybe. always said to my uh, family, and my sisters uh, and agree with me on this, that I don't think I've changed much since I was 10 years old. Like all the things that I liked and yeah. went to and personality of t me being 10. The only thing that's changed is just the responsibilities have kind of covered that up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, mm. I think, but that's when you, like I think where you, wherever you make the fondest memories, that's what stays with you because part of you is always trying to get back to that. Mm. So, yeah, I'm just a little boy with a big beard. <laughs> <laughs> right keep it moving shall we maybe we can go back to some of these so um so we're talking we're inside of extroversion now we we talk about enthusiasm then we have assertiveness mm -hmm. assertiveness yeah. is uh what does it mean um assertive people are the taking charge types they put their own opinions forward strongly and tend to dominate and control social situations Assertive people can be influential and captivating. They have the communication style that is often associated with leadership. This is good when they are knowledgeable, competent, and able, but not so good when they aren't. Assertive people, assertive people are people of action. They don't generally wait for others to lead the way. Mm. Interesting that this is like a personality trait. I'm just uh, reading that through because I'm very high in assertiveness. I'm 85th percentile. Oh, interesting. Um, I'm very high as well. I'm That's 90th, right. 90th percentile. Oh, mashallah. That's and like shit, leadership material, bro. That's what you get for being a dad, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I wouldn't say that. I think it's, it's separate from your environment, but it's a good thing because, you know, we're in positions of leadership, whether we like it or not. So the fact that we are high in this traits probably helps with that. But it, it's in con conflict with agreeableness. Yeah, I'm very high in agreeableness and high in yeah. assertiveness. Yeah, yeah. so I'm not sure That's how that confused. works. Maybe it means you take initiative, but then you don't force that down people's throats. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Well. It just shows there's all kinds of colors in the rainbow, isn't there? Um, next, there's number four, right? Neuroticism. Uh -huh. uh, the neuroticism is the primary de dimension of negative emotion. Neuroticism mm -hmm. is a measure of general sensitivity to negative emotions such as pain, sadness, irritable or defensive anger, fear and anxiety. 
So the previous extroversion was positive emotion. This is negative emotion. Where are you? Uh, moderately high, 74. Mm. This is another opposite one. <laughs> you know what I am? sensitive to emotions, bro. What are you? <laughs> Third percentile. Oh. Exceptionally low. Oh. Oh. <laughs> bro, I feel nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Just a cardboard box, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very uh, interesting. <laughs> you're a soulless puppet. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Not soulless, just feelingless. <laughs> okay, God. what does what imagine, does you, imagine if you yeah. had this, you'd done this before your marriage meeting, right? Oh, and he just went. <laughs> can, what, can you tell me about yourself? Well, I'm heartless. I have no emotion. <laughs> I have no positive emotion. I have no negative emotion. <laughs> Don't do this test before you get married, guys. Do it the way after, like we did. <laughs> just just keep keep these bits a secret. Right. Okay, I want you to read your thing, like people who are high or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Uh, people with moderately high levels of neuro neuroticism are somewhat more likely to think that things have gone wrong in the past or are going wrong now and will continue to go wrong in the future. But, th but this is it, this is in opposite to the other. Thing. Yeah, what was it? that's true. Uh, Optimism. Yeah, yeah. Abuser. They are more also more likely to be unhappy, anxious, and irritable when just thinking of remembering. And when they encounter a genuine problem, they have lower than average levels of self esteem, particularly when they are also in a low in extroversion. Neuroticism is a risk factor for anxiety disorders and depression. Um, and then there's loads more, which I won't go into. But yeah, see what I mean? Like it's it's. But maybe that just means you're very you're volatile, right? So when you're feeling good, you're feeling very hopeful, and when you're feeling bad, you're feeling very you know pessimistic. Do, do you know what? What it is, bro. For me, at least, it's a, I I was like that before practicing Islam. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of my enthusiasm comes from Islam, like the hope for the future, things are going to be fine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's me trying to have tawakkul on Allah. And I've been doing that for 10 or so years since practicing. That has become part of my personality. Like that's what I think of. But I am battling my whatever person, my, my, I don't know if you want to call it original personality of having uh, that neuroticism maybe and things mm. always being negative and stuff. Yeah. Because, because things were negative, that's what led me to practice it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're you're always going to be constantly battling. But then again, everybody's got positive and negative sides to them, you know. Except me, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> apparently. Apparently. Mm. Go. Mm. Anyway, you know, yeah, it's interesting how this stuff would manifest. You know, like I was just yeah. thinking, you know, Hudayfa bin Yaman, he he said the Sahaba they used to ask the Prophet about the good, and I used to ask about the bad. Mm, absolutely, and yeah. that could be just purely like his personality type is more like high in neuroticism, right? Yeah, and like maybe his default is like, look, bad things are going to happen. Let me ask about them, kind of thing. Yeah, but I yeah, think maybe yeah. he said in that narration that I used to ask about the evil because I want to protect myself from it. I can't remember the rest of it, but some here look people with moderately higher levels of neuroticism appear to be somewhat risk averse which means they will be less likely to pursue or enjoy recreational career financial and social situations where the possibility of loss is high such people appear to be concerned with maintaining their current status rather than enhancing it perhaps this is a good strategy in genuinely dangerous or uncertain times mm. Mm. conservativeness yanni um i think high neuroticism is also a female thing, bro. Bro, I've got all the all the female. Do you know what though? I was I grew up surrounded by women, so mm. if I've picked up some personality traits, it is what it is. It is the it typical is. woman is higher in neuroticism than sixty percent of the general population of men and women combined. So it seems like, you know, obviously when we talk about personality traits, uh, yeah, it goes. You know, obviously people can wonder, you know, is personality based on gender? Well. Some of these of the big five very much are like uh, different based on gender, and one of them is neuroticism. So women feel negative emotion more strongly or more often than men, quite quite by quite a big margin. Mm. So inside of neuroticism, we have uh, withdrawal. Uh, yeah. What is withdrawal? It is. Indiv so I'm very low. I'm 10th percentile withdrawal. Individuals very low in withdrawal almost never suffer from or are impeded by anticipatory anxiety. 
They can handle new, uncertain, unexpected, threatening, or complex situations very well. They are far less likely to avoid or withdraw in the face of the unknown and unexpected. Mm. I see. Mm. Um, I'm average, by the way, 57. So, okay. So sometimes I may, sometimes I may not. And then the next one is volatility. This is my top score. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You've been so, so, you know. No, when I say straight. top score, I mean like record breaking. Oh, what you're in, like in number the, one? Yeah, first percentile. No way. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, could make this up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, volatility, exceptionally low, first percentile. What's yours? I'm I'm high, 84. Mm. See, look, this is a thing. I get us to record every week and you keep it interesting. Well, this is it. But that's how we, you know, you set the topic and I just throw my random opinion on it on top mm. of it. Yeah. My feelings. On the other In occasion, I might not have a feeling and I have to invent a feeling for just to entertain everyone. <laughs> 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 no, yeah. But carry on. Uh, sh what's, uh, what does that mean for you then? So it I says um, people with low involatility are extraordinarily stable and predictable in their moods. They are virtually never irritable and very rarely experience disappointment, frustration, pain, and loneliness. <laughs> Just never feel pain. <laughs> um, you, are, you are a man's man. People find them extremely easy and calming. They are mm -hmm. very infrequently, they very frequently express their frustration, disappointment, and irritability and appear remarkably reasonable when they do, even on those unusually infrequent occasions where they become stirred up, upset, angry, or irritated, they calm down almost immediately. Yeah, I guess that would explain. I never, like, get angry and stuff. Um, even if exceptionally provoked in a dispute, a person of very low volatility will rarely react in kind. Such people remain calm and unperturbed, even when extraordinarily stressed. Blah, 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 blah. That's um, nice, man. Women are higher in volatility. Yeah, go on. What's yours then? Yeah, no. When um, individuals high in volatility tend to vary in their mood, they can be irritable, react strongly to dis disappointment, frustration, pain, and the threat of social isolation. They can lash out and are ease and relatively easily annoyed. They are more likely to act out or verbally express their frustration, disappointment, and irritability. They can be stirred up and upset, and once angry or irritated, take a longer, longer than average time to calm down. They can be argumentative and lose their composure. They can be provocative in a dispute. Uh, perhaps people high in volatility get upset if something bad does happen, while people high in withdrawal suffer from more concern than that something bad might happen. Uh, technically, volatility has been associated with activity in the brain systems that regulate fight, flight, or freeze. Uh, um, yeah, makes sense to me. I mean, Where do you I've think heard... ego comes into this? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely in there. Uh, but it, um, I think ego comes into everything because the nefs is the ego in my eyes. Allah knows best, but the, that's the. Uh -huh. in, 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 so like you think the, that personality is separate from ego? Personality no, no, type. no. No, I think um, it depends. It's contextual. I think because it depends who's who is uh, threatening your ego. Um, you know, if you are like a leader of the family, for example. Okay, mm -hmm. so you've been given this position by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Um, you are you've been given this position as per the Sunnah to lead this family, um, and then your leadership is challenged in a way by someone who should you should be responsible for. Um, like I don't know, my son, my son this today was telling me off for like trying to burp my kid, the baby, mm -hmm. Khalid. Mm. Trying to burp Khalil, he's like telling me off. He's like, "No, don't do that. You can hurt him." Blah blah blah. I was like, "Looked at him. I was like, we talking about? Like, I've, I've raised three of you, and I'm doing." <laughs> and then I realized, I was like, "Wait, why is my why is my ego getting damaged?" <laughs> <laughs> like, he's getting so protective over him, and I'm just like, "Dude, like, but yeah, that that kind of thing. Like, when someone you're responsible for starts trying it with you, then you're like, why why this this isn't right? They don't talk to me like that." I'm your father. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, but with anyone, with anyone, like you could be, you know, you could have more experience in a workplace. That that was one that used to wind me up. I've got more experience in the workplace. Like I've, I'm the one telling you, teaching you, and then you switch with me and start, like you're teaching someone and they start trying to run a mile or whatever. Mm. And you're like, what the hell are you doing? Come back here. I'm, I'm in charge. <laughs> Stuff like that. 
But you tell me, bro. How have you have you tamed your ego? Well, this is the thing. Is like I was thinking about it because just I feel like it's linked to my lack of emotion feeling. Like I don't get angry, but also I rarely feel that whole what's the word ego pride thing. Like how can he say that to me? I'm more just like he said mm. that to me. Okay, kind of thing. Mm. I'm not saying it never happens, but. Yeah, I'm just not particularly, don't particularly feel that either. So I thought it might be linked. I do remember like when I, well, I didn't read it, but I listened to the audiobook Ego is the Enemy uh, a mm -hmm. few years ago. I've got the book though, my sister bought it for me. But I remember when I listened, when I listened to that, bro, my whole like perspective just shifted. I remember Faisal talking about Obstacle is the Way and that was a really big one for him. And I mm. liked that. I gave it like four stars out of five. But Ego is the Enemy was my five out of five. Mm. So it, it, it probably spoke to me in that way and maybe if i was to listen to it again it would kind of re-establish that control again i was thinking um, as well about you that if it wasn't for islam i can see you being the type that would get into fights a lot oh no no because that goes back to what, something i said earlier about conflict oh that's it, true mm, uh, agreeableness yeah confrontation here we go uh, politeness moderately high mm. Moderately polite people will try to avoid conflict and basically desire to, to steer clear of confrontations. I might get into verbal arguments a lot. Yeah. But not physical fights. I was never a fan. Mm. Never a fan. Mm. Uh, you know, mm. don't worry. I can still like defend myself if I have to, but I'd rather avoid it. This camera is acting up today. Okay. The last one is openness to experience. This needs a oh, definition. We... I don't know what this is. So oh. openness to experience means it's the primary dimension of creativity, artistic interest, and intelligence, particularly verbal intelligence in the model. Openness to experience is a measure of interest in novelty, art, literature, abstract thinking, philosophy, as well as sensitivity to aesthetic emotions and beauty. I'm going to mm -hmm. guess you should be high on this, isn't it? Surely. I might be, but you tell me what you are first. Um, average 53, 53rd percentile. I am high, 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 moderately high, 68. Mm. I feel 68. that. I feel that. I used to think, because you know, I was quite good at uni and stuff. Yeah. And I used to think I'm like, um, I'm good at like philosophy and these abstract concepts. But you know, when I think about it deeper, I think I'm actually not good at, like I'm not any better than average. So I think this fits me about right. Mm, I like that. I think I, I think I was good at uni because I was good at uh, breaking down tasks into parts and then just doing them rather than like, yeah, I'm a genius. I understand the abstract ideas and all that. Yeah, you, you're you quite uh, practical, pragmatic, those kind of words. Throw yes. them in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. So tell me, because yours is uh, above average, like what's what's the explanation of that? Uh, 60, uh, people with moderately high levels of openness to experience are somewhat more likely than average to be characterized by others as smart, creative, exploratory, intelligent, and visionary. They tend to be more interested in learning and in inquiring new abilities and skills. They are curious and explo exploratory. They find themselves interested in abstract thinking, philosophy, and the meaning of belief systems and ideologies. They attend cultural events such as movies, concerts, dance recitals, plays, poetry, readings, gallery openings, and art shows. They're likely to enjoy writing. They enjoy complex abstract ideas more than the average person and like to confront and solve problems. There's loads more to this, but I'm not going to read all of it. But yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty long one. Yeah. But you know, I, you know, like um, the, the type of person that I feel. Like, actually, when we take all of these together, yeah, your your thing. You know what the, obviously taking, like, the destination in the Akhira out of it, right? You know what you can be, bro? I think this, well, this fits your profile. This person fits your profile. Is like a Steve Jobs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me that. I think. I'll tell you what to do. You just go do it. I know what I want, but I don't know the specifics of how that can be achieved. Yeah, yeah. You know? I want the iPhone, but I don't. How do you make it work? I want to touch the screen and I want it to do things, but you need to figure that out. <laughs> exactly. No, he, Steve Jobs, I read a book about him like a uh, month ago or something. And it's, you know, I always heard this stuff about Steve Jobs. Yeah, he's this amazing genius. I didn't really know why. I'm like, okay, I'll take your word for it kind of thing. Yeah. 
But when I read this book, I realized all of these principles they had, which were actually really quite yeah. cool and unique. And yeah, he was that guy where he's like, it has to be like this. Now, the technical details of how to put a computer together, he had he didn't know that stuff in it. Yeah, that was uh, what's the was the X job. Um, but yeah, he was also kind of into that whole hippie stuff. He lived in India for a while and he was he was all about that kind of arts and like um, abstract ideas, like we we're saying. So that's that's where it can take you. You know, it could take you pretty far. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Let me see what it says about openness to experience is the dimension that best predicts political allegiance, bro. Um, oh. So conscientiousness, like high conscientiousness, leads to uh, particularly the aspect of orderliness is the second place, is a second determ determiner, determiner, yeah, is that the one? Of a political allegiance. So if you're conscientious, then you're more likely to be conservative, right? They like orderliness and blah, blah, blah. And then uh, openness yeah. to experience, those who are liberal politically are very much more likely to be high in openness to experience than conservatives. Both high in conscientiousness as well. That Ooh, means you're- so confusing. That means you're like, you're like the Muslim Steve Jobs. That's what I mean. Oh no, I wasn't. Sorry, I was low in consciousness. I oh, it was okay. High. There you go. Oh, so oh, you're liberal. Okay, we got a liberal here. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, 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 woke, go broke. What? Okay, women and men differ very little in openness to experience. That's interesting. Oh. I didn't expect that. Thank God for that. I can't take any more losses right now. <laughs> losses. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Then inside of this, we have intellect, which is, um, it's not about how smart you are. It's not IQ. It's a measure of interest in abstract ideas. Ah. What are you in that? 47 average. Oh, I'm 78. I thought I'd be more, but I guess I'm not. Yeah. Mm. Strange. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. This uh, is the one where I was thinking I'm pro kind of average, I think in this, but anyway. Um, so that's that. And then openness. What does openness mean? Let's see. The closest synonym for openness is creativity. Mm. So you must be high in this, yes? Or Let's have a look. Uh, high, 80th. No, oh, I'm low, 26th. Well, if you need any, any help, let me know. <laughs> Okay, you're pretty high. So, what's your explanation of what it means to be very creative? High, <clears throat> highly open, creative people can be impractical and flighty. However, uh, particularly in if low in consciousness, conscientiousness, it can be extremely difficult to transform creativity into money or into a career. <laughs> high level levels of openness. I laugh when I just see myself in this. High levels of openness are furthermore necessary for entrepreneurial success and are, and often prove useful at the top of hierarchies, even in very conservative occupations such as banking, accounting, and law, which need creative people in leadership positions to provide new vision and direction. Mm. Yeah, baby, I'm um, the Steve Jobs of this mind highest thing yeah you know um there's a, there's a really good book for like business uh, i don't know like kind of like organizing your business if you like it's called traction so in traction it says every business needs two types of people a visionary yeah. and an integrator the visionary mm -hmm. is that creative person they, they're they've got that leadership way of speaking they've got they're good at vision and feeling and passion and then the integrator is like okay let's get it done right so it's the Steve Jobs and the Wozniak. It's the, um, I'll give me another example. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure of another example, but um, anyway. They're out there. Yeah, the, out there. there are, I just, I can't think of them. But like, I think like Shigeru Miyamoto and Satoru Iwata. That's okay. a Nintendo, that's a Nintendo reference. So like mm -hmm. Miyamoto wasn't very good at like making video games like okay. coding and all of that stuff. Yeah. But he's a guy who made like Super Mario and Donkey Kong and all that stuff. That's still like big today. Everybody knows okay. Super Mario. Yeah. So, but like Satoru Iwata was, is, well, he's passed away now, but he was the president. He was the business head. He was the business Ah, okay. Guy. Yes. He was like the CEO. Integrator. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but, but Miyamoto has been there since like the early days and he's still there now as like the creative. Yeah. So he will, he will say, all right, you, this is what I want. 
Mario needs to do this. No, Mario doesn't do that. He does this. Yeah. He's still selling millions of copies of that video mm-hmm. game today. And there's a movie coming out as well. And he's, he, he was even um, in that movie, even though he doesn't make movies, he was, um, I think it was like Universal Studios, Illumination. They're the, they're the people that are making the movie. Mm-hmm. But he was, he's highly involved and consulted in that process as well for mm-hmm. the creative side of things as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's what I think of anyway. Mm-hmm. Probably, a, probably a deep cut. Uh, example but it's the first thing that comes to my head anyway yeah and there's loads of examples you know i'm definitely more of the integrator type right because i really struggle with um vision and all that i i Mm -hmm. i i I, I, and i know this because i've tried hard bro i've tried to have this you know where how companies have a vision and it's like you know we want we want to to create a world where xyz yeah yeah i can't do it bro i can't think in 10 year um timelines and stuff i re- I, i've tried and i just really struggle and with my business partners we've we've put together like vision statements and i'm like yeah that sounds good like i can tell that it sounds good but it does nothing for me like it doesn't yeah, motivate yeah. me excite me and like it annoys my partners but i'm like i don't know i just can't help it <laughs> yeah um you're a realist bro uh, really but it, it's a weakness because I'll tell you something, yeah? The integrator type of person, you can hire that person, yeah? You can you can find someone and hire them and they're good at business and KPIs and all of this stuff, processes. Um, you can hire that, but the visionary, you can't hire that really, right? Um, and actually, an, a, a, another example might be, you know, the founder of Uber, what was his name? Ka- Kalanak or whatever. He's like that visionary, let's get it done, let's be rugged kind of guy. When they got rid of him, they brought in the ex-CEO of Expedia, right? Like just pure business guy, get the job done. So there was the visionary. Then when the business grew to a certain level, it's like, let's calm things down. Let's get profit going. Let's do this and that. They brought that guy in. So, um, yeah, that's another example. But, you know, this is troubling for a, for a guy like me, you know. But you have to know yourself and maybe you can, maybe you can just outsource it or maybe you can improve yourself to a level where you can, you know, mm-hmm. solve these weaknesses. See, guys, imagine if me and Amin start a business. It'd be booming. Mm. He'd That's just make sure everything is like, and I'd make sure everything's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you should read that book. First time. We did that. We worked together before on something, didn't we? Was it Pure XI uh, or something else? I can't remember. Years ago now. We I think were, lightly. We worked, worked on this together. whole like podcast thing. Um <laughs> We ain't, um, we ain't making money, baby. Back so in the clothing about, thing, in the clothing thing, I think we were just like, kind of like... Uh, you did something on Pure XI, I remember. Was it marketing or something? You were trying Really, to, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think you were... I think you were... You learned, Maybe it was the early days and you were like experimenting with Facebook marketing and I think hmm. you did some... You ran some stuff from Oh, Pure possibly, XI. yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, yeah. long time ago. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, I think that was it. I think you did. Yeah. So that was a light touch. But, yeah. you know, petition to get him in to hire me for his next endeavor. Well, I'd have yeah. to hire you. You're the visionary. You need to hire me. You're hired. <laughs> Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so man. one thing I want to say about this test is I was thinking about how, like you said at the beginning, how you might use this for marriage. Like, obviously, before you're getting married. What do you think? I don't know. Should I click on my... Rep- I don't know. I don't want to bait my wife out. God, when you click the, the comparison between yourself and your missus, yeah. the, the little scroll bar goes so much smaller <laughs> because there's so much more information on the screen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's quite... It's quite a cool tool, actually. Yeah. Um, so it tells you, like, okay, which traits might be incompatible kind of thing. Yeah. We matched on that. We matched on that. We sort of matched on that. We definitely didn't match on this one. Uh, and I'll tell you something. Sort of on this one. Go on. Didn't match on this so, one. One thing I was thinking of is if you have a, an idea of what kind of husband or wife you want, yeah. then I think this would help, right? So, for example, if you want a, a more traditional, more feminine kind of wife, yeah, then you wouldn't go for someone who's uh, very low in agreeableness, for example. Yeah. Right? Um, so those kind of things, I think, can give you an indicator, especially not the the nitty gritty, oh, oh no, she's 66 percentile. Oh my God, let me get out of here. <laughs> yeah, not yeah, like yeah. that. But if someone is extreme in one thing, 
then it could be uh, at least a point of discussion. You know, I'm not saying like make there a decision was. based on that. Okay, like one, did we talk about orderliness? Hmm. You must have done because it was just before extroversion, but I don't remember yeah. talking about it. Okay. Um, yeah, that's was, that's yeah, something that. So I'm orderly. My wife must be much less orderly than me, right? Well, so that's something that it would be interesting to if I if I knew that before, then I would I would. I would just understand my behavior versus my wife's better, you know, mm. and it makes you more understanding of why you're doing certain things, you know. Women that, are more more yeah. orderly than men, apparently. Oh, really? Yeah. So it says, hey, women are more orderly than men. The mean percentile for women is 54. The mean for men is 45. So it's not that much difference. But with mine, because I don't remember talking about it with you, but with mine, I'm 25. Oh, I'm 76. And my wife was quite high. My wife's like 90 something. 95. So I'm feminine in this, bro. Possibly, but the, when I was looking at the comparison of orderliness, that yeah. was one of them. That like, it, when when I was talking to my wife about it, it really like stuck out to me mm. um, to a T. Let me find. Oh, it. So because asking, you're like twenty something and she's ninety. I'm twenty five and she's ninety five. Yeah, and then it gives yeah. you the implications as a yeah. couple. And it was sort of like because you are very low in orderliness, you are unlikely to be bothered about mess and disorder. Although they will both bother your partner a lot. Yeah. And like that was one thing I realized yeah. when we got married is like she is. She wants everything pristine, the right? Yeah, know, everything clean, tidy, clean, tidy. Yeah, yeah. And she uh, sometimes she uh, she'll go to London and uh, you know see her family and stuff, and maybe she'll be there for a few days, bro. Within twenty minutes, mm. bro. Chaos. Within twenty minutes, the house is a mess. I'll I'll be on my own mm. because I'll do something. I'll leave like I'll leave. Okay, I'll leave my keys. I'll come into the house. I'll leave my coat, my keys there because I might need to pop out in a bit. And everything's like in a. I might need to use that in a bit, so there's no point putting it away. And suddenly, everything of mine that I might need is everywhere because I might need it. <laughs> That's the way I think. Yeah. So yeah. But you're you're quite high orderliness. I see that shelf. It's very uh, you know it doesn't really change a lot. If I had a shelf <laughs> like that, bro, it'd be loaded with stuff. You know, what I I, I realized yeah. when I was living with my parents, um, my mom is very orderly. Okay, actually, both my parents are very orderly. Okay, so uh. I it could be just due to being like at school age. But I was like throwing stuff all over the place, right? Yeah. But when I lived alone, that's when it kicked in, right? It's like, mm. my mom's not gonna make it orderly. Now I want, I need to make it orderly, like just to stay sane. So then yeah, it really yeah. kicked in and I realized, okay, I actually am like that. No, mm. maybe I'm just lazy, bro. It's a laziness, I think. No, no. But by the way, you know, you said, um, you said about the difference between men and women in orderliness, yeah? 54 percentile versus 45th, yeah? Oh, yeah. That, it, when we're talking about, I remember Jordan Peterson was explaining this, when you're talking about personality traits, that actually is a big gap. Um, oh, right. Yeah, like 10 percentile points on average, is as, it, it might be as big as it gets in terms of uh, difference between the genders, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, when you see that, it's like, yeah, on average, Women are a lot more orderly than men. And that's a panel that you could even say that comes, uh, that goes back to the stereotype of the female secretary, for example, right? You need to be very orderly if you're a secretary. It could also go down, back to the whole, yeah, keeping the house like tidy and everything organized. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty stereotypical of men to be, not negatively stereotypical, but just, you know, usually you would, you'd think a man living on his own is going to be yes. a bit messier, messier than a, a yeah. woman. For sure, yeah. Uh, but even mentally, I don't know. Allah knows best. What would you think then? Um, what would you give this whole personality test? Do you think it lined up to what you believe you are? Or do you think there was some outliers that you didn't agree with? Yeah, when I told you we should do this on an episode, um, I had a few things in mind that I thought that's not, I wouldn't agree with it. But now we went through it, I can't like think of those things that I disagreed with. Hmm. I mean, like some of these really exceptionally low, you know, neur neuroticism, third percentile. Come on, at least give me like 13 or something. <laughs> <laughs> God, yeah, looking at mine, moderately, moderately high. But yeah, I, I can see the because the volatility matches up with the other two, because you, I was high in enthusiasm and then high in, ex high in extroversion, but then high in neuroticism. And yeah. then volatility saying high as well, then that made sense to me. Yes, yes. Um, but uh, there was the only thing I couldn't, I didn't really agree with. Mm. Um, where is it? <sighs> this sounds really bad, but the intellect one being typical average. I know it's not IQ. It's not about IQ. 
No, Otherwise, you'd not. think, oh, that's no. not what it's saying here. But it was about the openness to new ideas and abstract stuff and whatever. Yeah, I feel like I'm always getting lost in that. That's like what those are like the nuggets that keep me going. Mm. Uh, you know, I see some random YouTube video about some abstract concept, and I'm there. Um, but what yeah. was your score for that? Average forty-seven, I think. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I would. I would actually say that. Yeah, I would expect you to be higher than average. I'm also average depends. on that. Yeah. I suppose it depends on what the question was that was looking for that, and how that question was interpreted when answered. So I think you can use this for marriage, um, not to make decisions uh, black and white, but to uh, get into conversations, right? To open conversation topics, and then you could even use it for like career paths, right? So imagine you're the type of guy where. Your parents always, like, let's say you're younger than you are now. Let's say you're like 18 or something. And your parents are like drilling down your throat to become an engineer or a doctor. But then your conscientiousness is just not there. It's like, yep. stop forcing a square peg in a round hole. Yeah, 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 100%. So it could yeah. help for marriage, for career di direction. Um, what else? I mean, I, I think this is kind of marriage as well you could say it's not just marriage any kind of um long-term relationships it's like people maybe should know that about me that i'm uh like it's i'm not unenthusiastic i'm not bored i'm not like um uh, lacking compassion i just don't mm. feel strongly that's mm. one thing i i remember getting um over the years is like oh this just happened like why don't you care and yeah. it's just that i don't show if I care or not about things. And so people assume I, I don't care. So that could help people to think better of me. <laughs> I, I would, I'd be interested in doing, if I could have done this again, Yeah, it would have been like, I do it. And then someone who knows me do it for me as well. Oh. So like, imagine I was doing your one and I would yeah. answer as if I was you. Yeah. But I think a, a lot of people, like we have our own self view of ourselves. Yes. And then other people also know what we're like as well yes um, and sometimes that doesn't line up but if it really did line up then you know okay maybe mm. i've got to win it here mm. you know yeah you could take the I, average of both or something yeah because i like some of them we we were already kind of laughing before we got the answer like i thought okay i know you well enough i think you would be <laughs> this <laughs> yeah and i think that's important yeah. i think that would be a good way of doing it as well yeah, get like yeah. a mean number of everybody that knows you like five people four people mm. three people that know you whatever mm. um you know, um, before I married my wife, she, she had listened to the podcast and the, it was one of the first episodes. She said, uh, she got the feel that I was like very into money. Okay. And I don't mm. think I'm into money. Do you think I'm into money? I do think you're fascinated with it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No, in a negative way. I think it's a positive thing. No. Okay. But just like separating money from business. Like just money. Oh, money as in like the just the love and desire of money. Yeah, for like, the sake of it. Uh, you could say that, yeah. Like accumulating money and stuff. Oh, difficult. No, it depends how you... No, I, I wouldn't say, you know, I wouldn't say like that kind of way. I'm thinking more like... I didn't like, say good or bad. No, yeah, I'm thinking more like uh, fascinated with what it can how it can benefit you and those around you. Like basically you've mm. like you, you would, I be, I think that you're the sort of person that would continue trying to grow, mm. uh, you know, wealth mm. constantly mm. only because you want to build and benefit the Ummah uh, first and foremost, I think way before yourself. Um, I think you've got big ideas like, you know, like you're interested in like waqf, like setting up awqaf everywhere. Okay, I think that's something that's probably something you'd want to do, like with, like charity projects everywhere, whatever it is, things that benefit the ummah long term. Whilst in comparison, I feel like I would probably hit a particular level of wealth and just stop right there. But like, okay, that's it. If I can maintain this, I'm good. Uh, mm. Do you know what I mean? Um, but what what do you think? You agree or disagree? I mean, right, especially so, especially back then, I didn't think I was into money much at all, but. I think, you, you know how um, people inside a certain industry have a different view than people outside, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I feel that a lot. Like people who aren't, not just business in general, but specifically in like 
you could say online business. People who are not in that world, I think they see things differently. Like I was speaking to a friend of mine about money in the Sharia, like should you want money? Should you work hard to make a lot of money? Or should you just do a certain amount and see what Allah gives you? This kind of conversation. Mm. And I realized halfway through the conversation, we're talking about completely different things, you know? I'm really? like, like after halfway through, I was like, um, yeah, but you know, you can like make loads of money and that allows you to like serve a lot of people and um, employ a lot of people. And, and he's like, oh, okay, if that's what you mean, you know? Because I guess he was thinking about like, you know, that that whole like Wall Street kind of vibe, like he says, yeah, 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 <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, 100%, yeah. Um, so yeah, people think about it. And also exposure makes a big difference, you know, like I, I remember like before I even started my current business, I was very much like reading a lot of business books and like all, all the numbers, it's like, oh, 100K a month, 300K a month, 200. So that, those kind of numbers became normal for me. So um that 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 exposure just to that being normal um also affects you so um yeah i don't know what what i'm like to be honest when it comes to it. i ironically i kind of feel like uh you know you said i i would reach a certain level and kind of be okay yeah i can i kind of feel like that now you know and like and i feel like it's bad you know because who cares if, if who cares if i'm comfortable like i need yeah. But that's it. You feel yeah. like it's bad. That's what I'm saying. You, right. Because you feel like it's bad, mm. that's, you know, you've, there you go. You just, you just said an emotion that you felt. Yeah. So if, you, if you're feeling an emotion, it's hard yeah. Imagine, imagine. That's so so that, means, that, that means, yeah, that's going to propel you because there's going to be this niggling feeling in you that, mm. oh, this is bad. I'm getting too mm. comfortable here. Mm. I need to keep moving forward. Right? Yeah. Sometimes I think, you know, like some people, they, they go hardcore into like the Talab al -ilm. Some people go hardcore into Dawah or um, even like coaching. You know, like I do some yeah. coaching and I'm trying to improve my coaching. But I do sometimes think like, look, bro, just maybe your gift or your thing is just making money and running businesses. Like, don't try and be good at others. Just do it. Like, if you, maybe Allah actually will give you the tawfiq to do it. And so, yeah. you know, like... There are these people, they don't do much else. They do their fara'id, but they just make billions, yeah? And then they do good stuff with those billions. Like, I'm not saying I'm, like, sick, but sometimes, like, I think, like, maybe you're trying to do stuff you're not good at. Like, just maybe you're good at just making money. Maybe you should just make money. I don't know. I I think that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, there is this notion that we should try and take advantage of every uh, good deed avenue available to us and do our best in all of them. Um, but there's also the element, the aspect of like, what is the one thing I could be really, really good at? I just focus on doing that, yeah. you know, as often as possible. And, you know, if it is money, like doing good with your money, then like, yeah, because I, there's, I can't remember, I'm, I'm, I might be getting it off the top of my head, but there was some sort of a narration in relation to like, uh, people will be, will have like banners on the day of judgment in relation to like what deed they were most i hope i'm not making this up but it's in it's somewhere in my head um of like what they did most prevalently or something like that uh, obviously there's different gates of agenda that people enter from mm -hmm. um so that lines up uh maybe someone's just really good at fasting they can just stomach that right so they're just fasted all the time that was their focus um someone was really good at giving charity so that was even if they didn't have a lot of money but to them the ratio that they were giving to what they had was a lot yeah right and then there's going to be some people that are just jack of all trades of amazing at everything so sort, of, sort of thing do you know what i mean mm. um but yeah i think if you if you're if you can identify that you're really good at one particular thing then um do that thing and do that thing a lot and do it conscious that this is what you want to focus on yeah that's and, good and you knowing that mm. and when you make dua referencing that mm. do you get me um that's why, I, like, my, when we go, when we look back at the personality test, I'm not bragging here. I'm not trying to, but I'm just thinking, like, in my head, what I'd like to think I'm really, I, I find quite um, not easy, but like, I like to do a lot is that thing about forgiving people, moving on, trying to rectify relationships, trying to bring people together, um, and because, you know, yeah, leaders of households and whatever and all that kind of stuff. I try and do that so much that I'm always actively thinking of the reward of that every time I do it. 
Mm. Um, whilst other things I know I'm not very good at, you know, I haven't memorized much Quran. Um, I haven't got, you know, the best Tejweed, uh, loads of stuff. I could sit here list, listing all my faults or whatever, all the stuff that I'm not that great at. Um, some people are going to be amazing at Qiyam and Lay. That's going to be their thing, like every night. No, no, and it's easy for them, and they'll just continue to do it. Um, that's their thing. That's their flavor of the. Of, as long as you've got your farait in check, there's going to be the supergatory actions. One of those supergatory actions is going to be your ticket. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. That's going to be the thing. Because yeah, you may not be able to do all of them. But there's going to be one of those th those extra actions that. You know, someone's going to do all of their sunnahs every single every single prayer, every single day. And that's what we're going to be known for. Mm. You know, someone's going to recite Surat al-Mulk every single night before they go to bed. That's mm. their one thing that they did. And there's things like that. When there's, there's there is a hadith I recall um, of a, 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 a was a Sahabi. I'm going to butcher it again, but there was a Sahabi who was who uh, who I think the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam promised Jannah, and another Sahabi wanted to stick to him and see what is it that he does differently that is going to make him enter jannah because outwardly he couldn't tell what it was mm. he followed him day and night day and night and he couldn't figure it out and then he eventually asked him and i you know come as the prophet said, said or how the narration went so you're gonna to have to look it up but uh, eventually he said uh, you know i don't do th anything differently than you do the only thing i may do differently is that before i go to sleep every night i make sure that i've forgiven anybody that has you know ever harmed me uh etc and uh, you know i let I go think, of any grudges. Yeah, let go of any grudges. You know, that was one different thing, right? And I like to think that's probably what that's what I find quite uh, easy to do or whatever. So I'd like to try and encompass that. But doing it conscious that actually this could be a great reward. Let me continue. Let me pursue this. Um, loads of little things. My wife, yeah, may Allah bless her, bro. She has this thing that I've noticed where snails, bro, on the ground when it's raining, she just has to pick up every snail and move it. <laughs> like save save the snails they do get that, smashed yeah they do get smashed they do get smashed and that's like i know that she does many many good deeds of course but that's one of the things i'm like subhanallah like i i could see that on yom qiyamah mm. do you know what i mean yom qiyamah mm. i could see that being a shining light it's like the 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 the, the narrations of uh was it feeding a uh, a dog the prostitute mm. who fed, yeah uh, uh, obviously i'm not drawing that comparison but i'm saying it's a, a small deed that someone does that actually gets them into yeah. a very high level of paradise. I guess it kind of links to the the Prophet Sallam said, uh, "Man la yarham la yurham," right? Like mm -hmm. whoever doesn't show mercy won't get it. So reverse that, and it's like if you show mercy, then maybe Allah will show you mercy. Yeah, yeah. And see what's hard for you as well. Like on the flip side of all of it, imagine the reward of something that's super super hard for you. Yeah, but you you tried your best to to do it as well that's the yeah flip side. Yeah. and sometimes you just gotta batter your nafs and like submit it to your will well easy for you mr no emotion you punch your nafs it doesn't even say anything it just says well what's going on <laughs> <laughs> no nah, I'm nafs is different to like <laughs> feelings yeah um, alhamdulillah yeah you know that this is good stuff bro that the difficulty is like you know what i was saying about the whole make money and stuff the thing is, deep down, yeah, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to be that hundred million dollar guy. I hmm. like, I believe that a really good thing I could do is coaching. Yeah, yeah, and like yeah, coaching yeah. people on a close, on a close level kind of thing. I like, yeah. I feel like that, and like mentorship and coaching and those kind of things. Yeah. I like, I value that. But what if my skill set isn't there for that? And that's like, now Now you become conflicted. And I think a lot of people are conflicted like that. Um, I'm not like drawing conclusions about myself. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can always like learn and develop. But I'm just saying when the thing you think is the right thing to do and then the thing you're gifted at are different, then, you know, sometimes it takes people 10 years to realize and just give up the thing they thought is good and do what they're actually good at. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No, Discovery. Absolutely. Or maybe... Uh, Little mushrooms will fast forward that discovery for us. <laughs> well, it's all about the journey, isn't it? It's all about the journey and um, self-improvement. Self mm. no. uh, would I good. recommend this? Yeah. I, I don't know if I would recommend this. Really? Personally. Yeah. You know why? Because I get very caught, with, maybe because I'm not, you know, I don't like taking risks. Um, <laughs> 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 no, I get very cautious. Like I'm delving into like, 
almost horoscopy style uh you know stuff with this because i don't know how accurate the science is i don't know how self-prophetic it is as well like oh yeah i agree with that oh yeah i'm that thing because it said so you know yeah i've already highlighted a few things maybe i don't disagree with but is that my ego talking or am i just i am those things i don't know um i think what three pages and on each page there was how many questions i remember it was three no was it more than three pages <laughs> I think I did the test a while ago, but I think it said there are a hundred sentences that you have to say how much you agree or disagree with. Let me see FAQ formatted question. Blah 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 blah. I can't remember. Um, yeah, I just felt like it wasn't enough questions, even though it felt quite long. Mm. I felt like I just feel like personality is so vast. I used to have this thing, bro, where I used to think that you know what, people aren't as different as. You know, they try and make themselves out to be. Individualism is a lie. Um, what else? Uh, men and women aren't that different. Blah, 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 blah. And then now I'm like, no, 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 no. Wait a second. Like, people are way different. Because there's been people that on the front, on face, like, at the face of it, I think I'm so similar to. Oh, my God, we like that. We both like those things. Oh, my God, we both went to this school. Or we both studied this. Or we both have this in our lives like all these things and then i meet that person in person or i interact with them for longer and i just it's just clashes bro it's mm. just like, doesn't no i don't know actually that one unique thing about you that's different it is actually way <laughs> different do you know what i mean but even mm. though on paper you'd think oh we both have this and we both have this and we both have this and we both like this and we both do that you know what i mean uh, i think you know what Faisal is one of those guys before i met Faisal, i was like we are like twins like we like there were so many things that were lining up together that i felt and then when i when we kind of got to know each other a bit more i was like oh no 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 no! you we were going to a fight with him no no i never did that <laughs> but i felt but now i'm like despite the similarities there are some differences in just other things i think i can't really put my finger on it um i think Faisal yeah. should do this test he would get he some extreme been. answers oh we're no, having him no on soon, doubt. are we yeah inshallah Inshallah, throw it to him. I think he'd definitely have some extreme answers. Tell him if you want to be on mind host, you have to do this test. <laughs> Guys, this test isn't free, is it? Ten dollar. Ten dollar. So sponsor the podcast so we can recoup our losses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I liked it, bro. I think it's better than Myers Briggs. And uh, you can you can by the way find this test for free as well. Oh, um, funny that. It might be slightly different. I'm not sure. And I'm not sure if they give you percentiles and all that. Yeah. But um, this one, because they have a database of over 10,000 answers, might even yep. be 100,000. So they're able to compare you with people and stuff. And that's maybe yeah. in theory will give you more accurate um, outcomes. Mm. This is the stuff that JP should stick to, isn't it? That's what you were saying. This is his. Well, I said it. This is yeah, his stop. mode. Yeah, he, he still keeps sticking in the oh, the liberals are this, and the and the mm -hmm. conservatives are this, and women are that. well, men and women. He could talk about that if he wants, but just stay out of everything else, man. I stop think Carl Young things. actually came up with this, maybe the five type uh, personality type, five traits, whatever it's called. I don't remember what my uh, alphabet soup one was. I S T P E S T G F G A B C D. I don't remember what, what I was for that. Those um, people, those ones, you know, like you can, if people that know a bit about that, they can actually guess quite accurately what people are. Uh, oh, I look guess at that, the, bro. There's just eight binary options. My DNA is in the lab, guys. Okay. My DNA maybe, is in maybe the next. Lab. Next no, week it, or says the week here, after. it says here February expected by February the fourteenth. Um, still like a month away. Whoa, you oh. got them postal bro, maybe, strikes. You need to do it as well, bro. So then uh, we can compare. Then I'll get uh, my DNA. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to link that to one of these personality traits. So I'm struggling. Boring. Well, they got your personality, so they <laughs> they've got that. Then they have your DNA. Yeah. Right. What's then they have that? the blueprint. They got the yeah. physical body. Yes. You can load up, load up the, the personality engram. Yes. Right on the Neuralink device, and then put it in the mRNA. And then everyone can have their very own amine. Yeah. For the low price of three hundred and ninety-nine pounds. <laughs> <laughs>
Do you have to do? Um, do you have to have the Corona vaccine to go had? Do you know about that, bro? Do you know what? Yeah, I know we spoke about vaccines before. No, I don't know. By the way, I don't know. No. Sorry to, no. but like, I've been getting so ill all the time, no. like, all the time. I was no. ill before, like constant, like flu stuff. Friday, Friday night, bro. I want, I wanted to get some fish for the family. You know, mm. I wanted to cook some fish. I ain't cooked in a long time. I start some cooking trout. fish. Uh, red mullet, actually. Oh Three yeah, that mullet. was your one. Yeah, mm. yeah, delicious. Mm. Anyway, I start cooking it. I'm in the kitchen cooking it. Uh, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, my throat's getting a bit sore. I don't know why. Mm. Like my throat's starting to get sore. Or how long did it take to cook a, a, tra- a red mullet? Maybe what forty minutes, something like that. I had it in the oven, so it was kind of slow. Put it down, start eating. Oh, my throat's getting really sore. Bro, I finish my food ten minutes or so. Come sit on the sofa. Flu hits me like a train. Bro, like absolute train wreck. I was gone. That's it wasn't great. like this gradual process. Yeah. yeah, bro, I didn't know what was wrong with me. Honestly, and I was trying to drug myself up with Lemsib and stuff. Uh, last night, middle of the night, I was just sh- like sh- shivering, bro. Waking up the waking up my baby. Shivering. This was just last night. So it was from Friday night up until last night. It was the worst of it. Wow. Um, mm. But it was. But my, what my concern was, it was like super rapid. Like yes. just out of the blue. So it wasn't like, oh, I feel, yeah. yeah, it wasn't like, oh, I've got a sore throat today. Oh, tomorrow oh, I'm feeling a bit. It literally just came on really quickly. But that's but that's the second time uh, this <clears> month that I've been ill. And I've been ill like four, five, six times since. I'm thinking, man, maybe that vaccine was a bad idea, man. <laughs> if you weren't so agreeable, then you wouldn't have taken it. <laughs> I just want to follow the rules. They said do that vaccine, man. So I just thought I'd do the vaccine, right? What other, what choice can you make, right? Yeah. You it upon I mean, you. this is the thing. It's hard to like link it directly, isn't it? Bro, all the news out there, you don't know what to believe anymore. This guy says it's bad. This guy says it's good. This, you know, I've done vaccines my whole life and now I have this new va- Anyway, oh, we're going to get flagged now because we spoke about vaccines, bro. Mm. Oh, bro. Oh, bro. This happens all the time. Didn't it happen recently with one of our episodes? Yeah, <laughs> they old flagged one, yeah. It. <laughs> but that was like one where we were just going like all as long as we don't say the c word don't say the c word i didn't say yes. the c word carl young <laughs> i was gonna say something but i don't want to trigger it <laughs> <laughs> guys let us know what you thought let us know what you thought you know especially in the telegram if you want to if you want to if you want to if you really care about amin and muhammad of the mind heist podcast and you want to read the whole like thing you want to study us and our personality <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll put a link to our results or whatever fully uh, if you really want it you gotta be in the telegram you gotta ask for it i don't expect anybody to request that that's really boring like pay attention to your own lives if you okay. want to do this and let us know what you got in comparison and how you felt about it yeah let us know in telegram again i'm not going to respond to emails anymore it's telegram or, or nothing mm. <laughs> um yeah well, that's it, bro. I don't really have much more to say on the on the understanding myself. Is there anything else you want to divert to? I was thinking of something, you know, when the, we need to finish, but you know the flu thing? Yeah. Did you know, have you heard of there's a thing, yeah, where it's like putting onions in your socks? <laughs> no. You not heard of that? Apparently no. that's a cure, bro. You like get an onion, you, you cut it up or whatever, so it's like the juice is coming out. Put it in your socks and your your feet will absorb the juice or whatever. Apparently it's I don't know exactly what's good for, but maybe it's like flu and cold and stuff. Yeah. That's kind of my like that's kinda of wild. That's I think garlic and onion has some something mad about it, mashallah. When I get um, an infection, I tend to take uh, raw garlic, like a pills kind of thing, like chop it up into little bits and swallow it with water. Um, Apparently, it strengthens the immune system. So that's Uh, why I do. When I know I've got an infection of whatever type, then I do that. When I've got like a cold, which I guess a cold is an infection, but you know when it's like more like nose is blocked, then I will boil ginger and drink the water of that. And it tends to clear your nose out uh you're like a witch doctor yeah Doing, uh... no this stuff is like 100 percent um you know works yeah? and it's like very common people use it but the whole onions in your socks this is new to me so i need to look into it maybe uh, maybe like really effective 
Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it could be a million things. Bro, I could have got hit with Ain. Yeah. Or, because I did go out. I went to Jumar, which isn't, you know, the end of the well, world. Well, you look fresh, it, brother. Not particularly. I tried, but I haven't really got much to look fresh with. But I went to Jumar and came back. It's that, in fact, actually, the first time I noticed my throat was hurting is when I get, was walking back to my car from Jumar. Mm. And then I went to the to the fishmongers, got the fish, came home. Oh. Um, but uh, what else could it be as well? I had realized... Because I'm doing, I don't want to talk about it. I'm doing intermittent fasting again, but I don't want to give you a whole lesson about trying, <laughs> try, try not to, try not to talk about my life. Um, but I realized like my timer had hit 25 hours of not eating, mm. and I hadn't realized that I'd eaten that long. Oh. So it could, I thought maybe like I got into a keto flu or something. Okay, do you know what I mean? So it could have been that as well. Um, they talk mm. about keto flu, don't they? I was feeling kind of ketogenic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> bro, Jesus. six years of just me rambling nonsense. I'm like a bouncy ball going up and down. Look what I'm doing this week, and then next week I don't talk about it, and then next <laughs> month after, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm doing this again. <laughs> Pretty normal. <normal. laughs> no wonder we got no fans. Let's end it there, bro. I'm gonna neuralize you from this episode, bro. That's it. You forgot. You forgot. Is that everything. that Men in Black thing? Yes, bro. Because I'm the right. creative one, so I came up with the joke just now. You're getting neuralized. This isn't as bright <laughs> as I want it to be. <laughs> the creative one. Okay, so how like a lot of movie handy shit or that stuff? We're going to be like, "Salam alaikum." You're not going to be able to do.